Hello, welcome back to The Crafty Organizer. I'm Noreen Burke, and the other day I shared with you how I got to refresh my bookcases with panel paper for bulletin boards. It was super easy and super inexpensive. But part two that we're doing today is how I got to refresh my boxes and how you can do it too. Let's go. Now before I do anything else, I want to talk about the spray adhesive. I got so many questions on this. I use two different brands and I only choose the difference based on who has the better coupon or who has a sale. But what I used on this project was Treehouse Studio or Studio Treehouse. I'm never sure which way it's called. There are a lot of good spray adhesives out there. Like I said, I use either this one or the 3M. The most important thing is you want one that is not permanent. If it does not say permanent on it, then it should be repositionable. Since I use the Studio Treehouse and 3M, neither of them say repositionable, but because they don't say permanent, I have been able to peel them off every single time. I do not have familiarity with other brands, so I can't speak for those, but I do know that this and the 3M that do not say permanent will easily come off later and allow you to reposition at any given time. Now let's get into what I did with the rest of my area and how I refreshed my boxes. For my filming area for Annie's, you know that this is in the garage, so this area above has to be open so the garage door can open and close. But this panel is just bolted to the back of one of my stainless steel storage racks. So that means these gaps on the side are always bothering me. So I want to address that while I am redoing this. So of course the first part is taking everything down. These are items that I made through the Farmhouse Kit Club on Annie's Creative Studio and I love them so I went ahead and put them up. And then if you haven't seen the video of how I attached these gutters to my wall for storage, I'll have that linked in the description below. But this was a super easy project. Three screws, they have been wonderful storage for me, and they are just as easy to disassemble, and I'll be able to put them right back on the wall when I am done. Once everything was off, it was time to attach the paper. It was already four feet wide, which was the exact same width as my panel. It was not as long, so all I had to do was cut it down to size. I applied the spray mount to the wall and to the paper, and it was a super easy attachment. Now, I did realize later on that because this is particle board and I didn't have a good sealant paint on it, the paper is pulling away, which makes me very sad. This has not happened on any interior wall that I've done in my house or on any bookcases, but because I didn't sand this particle board before I painted it, it is not as smooth texturally, so I'm having some pull off, but that's okay. I have a lot of different methods I can use. I can use small tacks inside of it. I can slit the paper and spray more spray adhesive on the inside, and then use some invisible tape over it to seal up those things. So now let's talk about my boxes. I got these from Ikea a couple of years ago. They were clearancing them out. I got them all for just, I think, a dollar a piece. They were crazy inexpensive. And it's the one comment that I get repeatedly of, where did you get those boxes? So I've come up with a way to duplicate them, so don't go away. But for these to refresh them, I wanted to make sure they weren't glossy for the cameras. I found Matte Aqua by Krylon, and even though it was a little bit more of a mint green, I thought it would be a good enough match over the existing boxes. So here's what they look like faded. The sun has definitely bleached them out a little bit. And as I said, I'm messy. So there's some stains on them here and there. So I applied a finish on all of my boxes with just the matte aqua. And that gave me this perfect finish on my boxes. I am so happy with them. Now, for you to get the same result, here's what I did. I started with the Gloss Blue Ocean Breeze Krylon Paint. Now this is a little bit darker in blue, but I tried it on two different colors so you would see what it looks like. So I used a white box by itself, and I also did this on a cardboard box. This does take several coats. I did 
four coats on the brown box, three coats on the white box, and my boxes that I was refreshing, I only had to do two coats. And actually on those boxes that didn't have any stains or severe fading, I only did one coat just to freshen it up. So you're gonna see me repeatedly applying these and I would only wait about 15 to 20 minutes in between coats. That's something I really love about the Krylon brand is it dries very quickly. You'll wanna make sure that you're a few inches away so that you're not getting any drips. While that second coat was drying, I decided to go ahead and take off all of that wrapping paper on those black boxes and to refresh them with the blue. Once my magazine holders were dry, I went ahead and took them in and started refilling them and putting their labels on. For right now, I'm applying my old labels to most of these. I'm still considering the polka dots on the front. This was a pretty quick project. I think I spent about two hours to redo all of these and most of that time was spent letting them dry. So for the brown and white boxes, I did two coats of the Gloss Blue Ocean Breeze. Boy, is that a mouthful for a name. I did two coats of that gloss, and then I did two coats of the Matte Aqua, and that gave it such a close finish to the boxes that I have. Here's what the three look like side by side. One of these is the cardboard, one is my existing blue, and one is the white. Can you guess which is which other than size? So the top is the brown cardboard, my original is in the middle, and the white is on the bottom, but they all look great. I don't think from a distance you would ever know that they were different colors. Now here's something else I love if you do apply a gloss with the matte over it. I'm trying to put coffee on here to show you, and of course because it's on camera I'm having a hard time getting the coffee out, but in a second a tragedy happens and I can't. I get way more coffee than I expected, but here's the beauty about having a gloss paint first. This will wipe right up, so I don't have to worry about when I spill coffee anymore, about it seeping into my cardboard and ruining it. So this was an added benefit to using a gloss first and then a matte after. So here's how they look on the shelf, and the only way you can tell the difference is the white box has a round circle at the end. Now here's my new Annie's area. I ended up adding a header at the top just to finish it off, but I am really happy with this. I think the cohesive look of this whole area is really balanced out now, and I just feel a little bit more calm in here. If you know me, if you've been watching me for a while, you know I'm gonna get bored and I'm going to change this again, but for right now I really love it. I loved the white with the black and white in the back and the blue, and that Dollar Tree contact paper is absolutely still my favorite, so I will probably revert back to it later. I I've already got it underneath this sheet, which means if I just do the black and white here, anytime I get bored with this, I can just peel off the wooden panel, roll it up and save it, and then bring it back later. This is such an easy way to refresh these areas, and you don't have to throw it away once you cut it down to size. So keep that in mind if you like changing your decor like I do. So here's how the whole area looks now. You can see I've got my lights set up for filming. My Annie's area is great for when I'm doing that. A lot of you asked about that. I'll have a link to their subscription site. They're a website that does a ton of different crafting tutorial videos, ideas, and they have a huge assortment of kits that you can purchase. I am doing their Uncluttered Crafter series, so you can see that in the link that I send you, but you won't be able to watch them, and I'm not asking you to buy a subscription with them, but a lot of you did ask, so this way you can at least see what I'm doing. I think you can watch a few minutes of each one of the videos, or you can do a trial for free. So check that out. But this filming area is great for them. And then when you pan around, the rest of my area is so cohesive and just happy. Now the last area I want to show you is a video I did a long time ago for the pegboard. And this pegboard spot is still working out so well for me. I am trying to modify it just a little bit so it doesn't look so cluttered. However, these are the tools that I use every time I craft. When I talk about the bullseye, these are my bullseye items, so I like to have them out. And then one of the videos I did a long time ago, you all kept asking, what's blinking in the back? And it was my Alexa. So I decided to be funny and give her her own little wreath to kind of conceal her and make it look better on my shelf. So I thought that was a funny little addition that I added in. But 
What do you guys think? Is this an easy enough tip? I ended up using three cans of spray paint to do all of these boxes. But you guys, I have a ton of boxes. I counted up, I have 12 of those magazine holders, 12 boxes, so 24 things that I had to spray paint, two coats, and because they were lids, it felt like there was a little bit more paint, but while I had the spray paint out, I went ahead and spray painted some of the decor that I had on my shelf, just once again, so it had more of a cohesive matching feel. So you probably wouldn't need that much spray paint. I wasn't sure how much I was going to need, so I got the three cans and held my fingers, and I actually have a little bit left over if there's something else I choose to unify for that look. Now, for some reason, spray paint is going up in price along with everything else, which just makes me so crabby. I did get this matte can at Hobby Lobby. I found it on Amazon and it was a lot more expensive. So check around online. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about this idea. If you've ever commented that you wanted boxes like mine, this is the perfect way to duplicate them, but you can use any color spray paint that you want. And that's why I showed the white box that I got from the Dollar Tree and just a plain cardboard box so that you could see what the finished product looks like. I wanna say thank you to my patrons who help me make these videos. Their support allows me to do things that I wouldn't get to do otherwise, and it also helps me get to do those virtual clients, which I'm working with one right now, and I can't wait for you to see what they do. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in just a few days. Bye.